He lost his father in childhood and his wife in middle age. He rose in rebellion, swept away numerous rivals to unify the realm, and founded the Great Tang Dynasty. However, he is often rated as the founding emperor with the least presence. Some say that Li Yuan's success as an emperor depended entirely on his son Li Shimi. Others argue that Li Yuan had greater vision and strategy than Li Shimi. So, what was the real Li Yuan like in history? In this video, we will follow the timeline to explore the life of Tang Gaozu Li Yue. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more great videos on Chinese history and culture. Hit the bell icon to turn on notifications, ensuring you don't miss any new videos. Li Yuan was born into a noble family from Guanlong, descended from Li Hao, the founding monarch of Xiliang during the Sixteen Kingdoms period, and his family had been prominent for generations. Li Yuan, grandfather, Li Hu served as Taiwei and was one of the eight pillars of state during the Xiwei. His father, Li Bing, held various positions during the Beizhou, including the royal historian, the governor of Anzhou, and the Chugoku general, and inherited the title of Tang Guogu. Li Yuan, mother was the sister of Du Gu Huanghou, the wife of Emperor One of Sui Dynasty. At the age of seven, after the death of his father Li Bing, Li Yuan inherited the title of Grand Duke of Tang. As an adult, he was known for his open and cheerful personality and his tolerance towards others. After the establishment of the Sui Dynasty dynasty, because his mother was the sister of Du Gu Jialuo and the sister-in-law of Emperor One of Sui Dynasty Yang Jian, Li Yuan received their favor from a young age and was highly regarded in the Sui Dynasty court. A man named Shi Shiliang, skilled in physiognomy, once told Li Yuan, Your bone structure is extraordinary, destined to be a ruler of a nation. Please take care of yourself and remember my words. Thus, Li Yuan harbored grand ambitions. At the beginning of Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty reign, Li Yuan served as the prefect of Xingyang and Lofan counties. Later, he was appointed as the deputy director of the Imperial Guards and the vice minister of the guards. In the spring of 613 AD, when Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty waged war against Gao Gou Li, Li Yuan was in charge of logistics at Huayuanzhe. In June of the same year, Yang Xuangan raised an army against the Sui Dynasty dynasty due to public discontent, and Li Yuan, following the orders of Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty, defended Honghuajun and oversaw military affairs in Guanyu. During this time, Li Yuan made connections with many heroes across the land, which led to suspicions from Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty. An imperial edict summoned Li Yuan to the emperor's touring locations, but Li Yuan did not go due to illness. At that time, Li Yuan niece Wang Shi was in the harem, and Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty asked her, Why hasn't your uncle come yet? Wang Shi replied that Li Yuan was ill, to which Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty asked, Is he going to die? Knowing this, Li Yuan grew increasingly fearful and indulged in drinking and accepting bribes to protect himself. In 15 AD, Li Yuan was reassigned as the pacification ambassador in Hedong, Shanxi. Upon his arrival at Longmen, he encountered a peasant uprising led by Mu Dua. Li Yuan led his troops to defeat the uprising and incorporated over 10,000 rebels, greatly increasing his military strength. He also defeated the rebel leader Tai Bao Chang in Jiangzhou, bringing tens of thousands under his command. The following year, he was promoted to the general of the right valiant guards. When the Tujue invaded the border, Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty sent him and Wang Rengong, the prefect of Ma Yijun, to counter the invasion. However, their forces were limited. Li Yuan then selected 2,000 cavalrymen skilled in horseback archery mimicking the Tujue in their lifestyle and archery to deceive the enemy. He also chose soldiers skilled in archery for an ambush. When they encountered the Tujue troops, Li Yuan ordered the ambush, resulting in a victory over the Tujue. In 617 AD, Li Yuan was officially appointed as the governor of Taiyuan and the palace supervisor of Jinyang, becoming the highest military and political officer in the region. He was ordered to lead an expedition against the bandit Jin Jiar in Li Shan, encountering him at Chue Shu Gu in He Xijun, where Li Yuan achieved a decisive victory. During the suppression of peasant uprisings, Li Yuan recruited and integrated rebels to continually expand his power. His son, Li Shimin, aware of the impending downfall of the Sui Dynasty dynasty, 
secretly gathered heroes, welcomed refugees, and recruited various talents. When the plan to rebel was set, Li Yuan was unaware. Li Shimin wanted to tell him but feared he wouldn't listen. He secretly consulted Pei Ji, who then chose several beauties from Tiyang Palace to spend the night with Li Yuan while he was drunk. Afterwards, Pei Ji revealed Li Shimin's plan to Li Yuan, who was shocked. Pei Ji argued, arranging palace maidens at such risk means I'm urging you to decide to rebel. Seizing the opportunity, Li Shimin presented the entire plan to Li Yuan. Initially, Li Yuan strongly disagreed and even threatened to report Li Shimin, but later agreed, saying, I love you too much to betray you. In 617 AD, as rebellions against the Sui dynasty dynasty erupted across the land, isolating Emperor Yang of Sui dynasty in Jiangdu, the magistrate of Qingyang, Liu Wenjing, and the palace supervisor Pei Ji were close friends of Li Shimin. Li Shimin conspired with Liu Wenjing to rebel. In February 617, under Li Yuan's jurisdiction in Ma Yi, the colonel of Inyang Mansion, Liu Wuzhou, staged a coup, killing the prefect of Ma Yi, Wang Rengong, and declared himself emperor. In March, Liu Wuzhou captured Lou Fanjun and Fen Yanggong, colluding with the Tujue to plan a southern conquest. Hearing this, Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty furiously ordered Li Yuan arrest. In this crisis, Li Shimin urged, it's urgent, we can act now. His confidants, Pei Ti, Xu Shishu, and Wu Shimuo, also persuaded Li Yuan to rebel against the Sui dynasty. Thus, Li Yuan, under the pretext of defending against Liu Wuzhou and the Tu Jue, dispatched Li Shimin, Liu Wenjing, Zhang Sun Shunde, and Liu Hongji to recruit soldiers, quickly gathering thousands. In Taiyuan, Deputy Governor Wang Wei and Gao Junya, seeing Li Yuan recruiting and purchasing horses, suspected that he was planning a rebellion. They conspired to lure Li Yuan and his son to Jinsi to pray for rain, with the intention of eliminating the Li family and seeking rewards from Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty. However, their plot was discovered by the local chief of Jinyang, Liu Shilong, who informed Li Yuan. The 15th day of the 5th month of the lunar calendar in the year 617 AD, Li Yuan and Li Shimin took preemptive action. They instructed the Sima, officer, of Kaiyangfu, Liu Zhenghui, to accuse Wang Wei and Gao Junya of colluding with the Tu Jue and inviting them to invade the Central Plains. This led to the imprisonment of the two conspirators. On May 17, coincidentally, tens of thousands of Tu Jue troops attacked Jingyang giving Li Yuan a legitimate reason to execute Wang Wei and Gao Junya. In June, Li Yuan sent his sons Yi Jiancheng and Yi Shimin to attack and kill the defiant Gao De Lu, the magistrate of Xi He Ju. Meanwhile, Li Yuan also deployed an empty fort strategy to scare off the Pu Jie army. Subsequently, he began preparations for a rebellion against the Sui dynasty dynasty. In July 617, Li Yuan led an army of 30,000 and formally rebelled. In his proclamation, he criticized Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty for listening to slander, killing the loyal and good, excessively waging wars, and causing widespread resentment among the people. After the oath-taking ceremony, Li Yuan, along with his eldest son Jiancheng and second son, Shimin, led their troops southward. They successively defeated Sui Dynasty Dynasty's General Song Laosheng at Huoyi, crossed the Yellow River, and surrounded Sui Dynasty General Chu Putong at Hedong without attacking, quickly advancing southwest. At that time, Emperor Yang of Sui Dynasty was far away in Jiangdu, and the Sui Dynasty forces within the pass were weak. The Zhongyuan rebels and Wang Shichong were engaged in fierce battles, unable to focus on the west. Thus, the Li family advanced rapidly and entered Chang'an in November 617. Soon after Li Yuan entered Chang'an, he announced that he remotely honored Emperor Yang as the Supreme Emperor of Sui, and proclaimed Yang Yu, the grandson of Emperor Yang, as the Emperor, changing his name to Yi Ning as Emperor Gong of Sui. Emperor Gongdi advanced Li Yuan to be the King of Tang, the Grand Chancellor, and the Minister of the Shangshu, with Li Jiancheng as the son of the King of Tang, Li Shimin was made the Yin of Jingzhou and renamed as the Duke of Qin and Li Yuanji was made the Duke of Qi. When the news reached Jiangdu, Yang Guang had already given up on managing the chaos in the north. However, his imperial guards, mostly from Guanzhong, were eager to return home. Seeing Yang Guang's reluctance to return, 
they instigated the Jiangdu Mutiny, resulting in the assassination of Yang Guang and the abrupt end of his reign. In May of the same lunar year, Emperor Gong of Sui Dynasty was forced to abdicate the throne to Li Yuan, who then ascended as emperor in Chang'an, establishing the Tang Dynasty with the era name Wu De and making Chang'an the capital, known as Tang Gaozu. Li Yuan appointed Li Shimin as minister of the imperial secretariat. Soon after, he named Li Jiancheng as the crown prince, Li Shimin as the king of Qin, and Li Yuanji as the king of Qi. Thus, one of the most powerful dynasties in Chinese history, the Tang Dynasty, was born. Initially, the Tang Dynasty's territory was limited to Guangzhou and Hedou. It had not yet fully consolidated control over the entire country. Therefore, Li Yuan frequently dispatched his sons Li Shimin, Li Jiancheng, and Li Yuanji on military campaigns to gradually eliminate regional warlords. In June 618 AD, Li Shimin attacked Xue Ju and his son Xue Renguo in present-day Lanzhou, Gansu. Xue Ju died in battle in September, and Xue Renguo was captured and killed in November, securing the vast northwestern region. In 619, the Tang Dynasty used a counterintelligence strategy to exacerbate internal conflicts within the Yigui faction, leading to the capture and execution of Yigui and the pacification of the Hashi Corridor. In the same year, Liu Wuzhou and Song Jinggang, in collusion with the Tujue, captured Hedong and occupied Taiyue. Li Yuanji and Pei Ji were defeated and fled. Later, Li Shimin reconquered Hedong, recaptured Taiyuan, and eliminated Liu Wuzhou forces. And Song Jinggang fled to the Tujue and were soon killed. At that time, the Yellow River Basin saw a tripartite standoff between the Xia regime of Dou Jiande, the Zhang regime of Wang Shichong, and the Tang dynasty. In 620, Li Shimin was ordered to lead an eastern campaign against Wang Shichong, who formed an alliance with Dou Jiande against Li Shimin army. In 621, Li Shimin captured Dou Jiande at Wu Laoguan, prompting Wang Shichong surrender. In 623, Crown Prince Li Jiancheng captured and executed Liu Heita, a remnant of Dou Jiande forces, pacifying the Hebei region. In 624, Gao Kaida was killed by his subordinate Zhang Jinshu, who then surrendered to the Tang. The Tang forces also eliminated Fu Gongshi power in the south, finally unifying the entire country. In 626 AD, when the Tu Jue invaded the borders of the Tang dynasty, Li Jiancheng suggested to Li Yuan that Li Yuanji should lead an expedition against them. Wang Zhi, the officer in charge of timekeeping in the eastern palace of the crown prince and secretly aligned with Qin Wang, Li Shimin, informed Li Shimin of a plot, Li Jiancheng plans to control your troops and has prepared an ambush at Kunmingchi to kill you. Consequently, Li Shimin decided to strike first. The uprising in Jinyang was Li Shimin's strategy, and Li Yuan had once promised to make him the crown prince after its success. However, after establishing the Tang dynasty, Li Yuan made Li Jiancheng the crown prince. As Li Shimin fame and achievements grew, Li Jiancheng, in alliance with Li Yuanji, began to sideline him. Li Yuan, indecisiveness led to conflicting orders within the court, hastening the armed conflict between the princes. On July 2.626 AD, near the Xiangwoman of the imperial city in Chang'an, Li Shimin assassinated Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji, an event known as the Xiangwoman Incident. Afterwards, Li Shimin executed the sons of Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji and removed them from the imperial clan. Li Yuan handed over military and political authority to Li Shimin. Three days later, Li Shimin was appointed Crown Prince, and Li Yuan decreed that all matters of the state, regardless of their importance, were to be decided by the crown prince and then reported to the emperor. On September 4, 626 AD, Li Yuan abdicated in favor of Li Shimin, who ascended the throne as Tang Taizong and changed the era name to Zhen Guan the following year. After becoming the retired emperor, Li Yuan initially lived in the Taiji Gu. It was not until April 629 AD that he moved out of Taiji Gu and relocated to Da'an Gu. During his time in Da'an Gu, Li Yuan rarely left, except to attend some banquets hosted by Li Shimin. Li Shimin often went to Zhoucheng to escape the summer heat, but Li Yuan preferred not to travel. In October 634 AD, Li Shimin decided to build the Daming Gong to the northeast of the palace city as a summer retreat for the retired emperor. However, due to Li Yuan's death the following year, the construction of Daming Gong was not completed until the reign of Emperor Gaozu. In May 635 AD, Li Yuan passed away at the age of 71 in the front hall of the vertical arch due to illness. He was posthumously honored as Gaozu. In October of the same year, he was buried in Qianlin, and his wife, Empress Dou Shi, was also entombed there with the posthumous title of Tai Mu Huang Hao.
In the last nine years of his life, the Yuan relationship with Li Shimin was rather cold. Although Li Shimin did not neglect Li Yuan materially, the Xuanwuman incident remained a psychological barrier between father and son. As the founding emperor of the Tang dynasty, Li Yuan was undoubtedly capable. He established a new Tang empire from the chaos left by Yang Gua. However, as a father, he was seen as a failure. The tense relationship between Li Jiancheng and Li Shimin was, in part, due to Li Yuan indecisiveness. What do you think? Was the establishment of the Tang dynasty more due to Li Yuan or Li Shimin efforts? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments.